everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paola and today I have a super special guest for an author interview. Everybody say hello to Nina Moreno. So excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. Today we are here to talk about Nina's sophomore book called Our Way Back to Always. So uh, Nina, tell us a little bit about, oh, I love that cover. It's <laughs> so pretty. I do too. The cover is Eric Davila, who mm -hmm. is all over the place right now, and for good reason, because that is amazing. Our Way Back to Always is my next book. It is um, also a YA contemporary. It also takes place in Port Coral. So if you're familiar with Rosa, you'll know your way around town. <laughs> um, um, yeah, but this time it's a little different. It's dual POV, so it's both characters. It's much more of a romance, which I love. I'm a huge romance reader, and... Um, I know Rosa got marketed a little bit as a rom-com and there's definitely a love story, but it was fun to sort of explore that a little bit more, I think, in this one. It's about uh, Luisa Patterson and Sam Alvarez, and they are two seniors in high school who were best friends growing up. And then things got weird in middle school, as things tend to do. So there was a big mishap. They haven't spoken in years, even though they still live across the street from each other. And then Louisa, right before school starts, uh, discovers a bucket list that she wrote with Sam when they were in the seventh grade. And it sort of just flings the door open on the past. And right when they're trying to make a lot of decisions about the future and Sam's not really wanting to deal with the past or nostalgia at all, because he's dealing with a lot of the grief right now, there's quests. And there's some senior year adventures and there's some best friends pining over each other. So it was a lot of fun to write. And I'm really excited to finally get to talk about it. Like just the cover alone makes everybody <sighs> want to go ahead and read it. I, I love it. And the, the, the synopsis is also amazing. And I'm glad that you touched a little bit on the difference between Don't mm -hmm. Date Rosa Santos and Our Way Back to Always. Uh, but specifically for Lou and Rosa, what sets them apart? It's interesting because I, I do get a lot of questions about Rosa and I get a lot of questions if I'm like Rosa. Because I think when you're writing someone who's the same identity as you and you're constantly talking about your culture you're constantly talking about you know I'm ta constantly talking about being Cuban-American like Rosa do I have the same thoughts do I have the same sort of feelings but I'm nothing like Rosa like Rosa is this sort of dream character that I sort of got to live vicariously through like she's so academic goes after what she wants and you know she was in high school doing college classes graduated with her dual enrollment like degree both and I'm like I was not that student at all. I was never that student. I was middle road, C average, fighting my way through algebra. But Lou is much more like me. Lou is dealing with a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure. Um, she discovers that she has ADHD in the ninth grade. She's dealing with school. And then all of a sudden, the pressure of being performing in a really like exceptional way falls on her shoulders senior year because her sister was the academic, her older sister, and her mom's a college professor. So there's sort of that like story of I'm an educated Latina, capital E, capital L, you know, I'm going through life and I'm accomplishing things. And then here's Lou, who's not that, but her sister's now no longer going to college because her sister got pregnant. She's having her baby. She's not going to Princeton, which is very fancy. So now Lou feels like I have to do that because the next chapter of our story, obviously I have to write it. I can't be this loser who hangs out on her computer and ha you know has anxiety. I have to be like, I have to perform and I have to be exceptional. So that's me. Like I didn't deal with that specific thing, but I absolutely understand the pressure of like it being 12th grade. Oh God, you got to apply to college. Oh God. I want the viral video of me getting accepted into Harvard. Like I want to, you know, perform in these great ways that'll make everybody say, see, you did it, you know? So the way Lou, Lou deals with pressure, the way Lou is really afraid of disappointing others. And, you know, she deals and it, it can feel so much bigger than you sometimes. And I already gotten some early readers tell me, you know, Lou's a little grumpy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Sorry. She's not Rosa this time. She's not, <laughs> you know, so. Well, first of all, I love that starking difference between uh, Rosa and Lou and also about how you wrote 
both of these characters. I do think it's interesting how people, especially with authors' debuts, people tend to think that it's me, it's the, mm -hmm. it's the author, this is what they went through, this is semi-autobiographical or something like that, but it's, sometimes it's not. Yeah, I think sometimes, especially like when we're constantly like marketing ourselves according to our identity, mm -hmm. it can get really tricky. So like, I'm constantly in conversation about being Cuban American. And so people start to see Rosa and they think me and it's like, ooh, like. <laughs> But I love that. And I love that they're also very, very different from, from each other. So Lou is a fan fiction writer, which I love. But if you were to write fan fiction about a show or a book, what would it be? And what, sh uh, what ship would you write about? It's funny because I definitely grew up writing fan fiction but I didn't know it was fan fiction because like I had a computer I had AOL like I'm hanging out and I got to talk to my friends in chat rooms and stuff like that but I didn't like get to go beyond <laughs> that perimeter and like hang out on forums and stuff like that so I didn't know that there was this whole world of like fan fiction happening I think it could have been kind of wild for me to have gotten to engage in that but instead I got to kind of like write in my little corner and like figure out what I liked about stories and stuff like that, which I think was really critical for me, even sometimes more than whatever English class I was taking. But if I was to write it right now, and let me tell you, I've been tempted. Like two years ago, I was, I was, I had my deadlines and stuff like that, but I was so burnt out that I just kind of wanted to write for myself a little bit. If I was to do that, like I also play a lot of video games. My first love would be, um, because I love a lot of RPGs too, is uh, Mass Effect, which is this like sci-fi space opera game or whatever. You play one character and you sort of get to go through this whole big story and it's found family and you're building your team and there's romances that you can, you know, decide to romance someone. So I always romance this one particular character. His name is Garrus and he's my ride or die and he's an alien because I'm a total monster kisser. So if I was to write fanfic, it would be about them two and I've read a lot of it. So <laughs> I'm still reading it like if I could add it to my Goodreads total like oh completely I mean I would be a champion if, if fan fiction counted if you guys only knew I'd be crushing it <laughs> right exactly so uh, Lou and Sam have a summer bucket list or a bucket list for the senior year so what would be on your bucket list just the concept of travel feels really like wild I would love to just like go somewhere I would love to just leave I don't know experience a different season it's been I feel like it's been summer for like two years <laughs> the you know Sam and Lou's list it's very much they're not these huge things they're just moments and memories and you know I was definitely that kid that wanted that romanticized you know teen, what my teen years would be like and I wanted a bucket list to or uh, to do a time capsule with my best friends I want You know, all those little movie moments that we sort of romanticize for ourselves that I want to experience that. That's what I geek out over. Like I love, it's, it sounds silly. Like I love going to, when we go to Disney and Epcot's one of my favorite parks and you can go like around the world. I love like pretending and like sitting in the little pub and being like, oh, look, it's raining. Let's, you know, let's get a pint. And I pretend it's safe and it's, it's so playful. Just the concept of the small moments being really significant and making memories and like geeking out over a theme and you know I think those moments are really like it's kind of what I wanted to capture with a bucket list and that's kind of how I would especially I don't know after the last year like you know what I just want, I want to sleep I want to go outside and not sweat I want to see my friends and have a nice dinner and not feel this stress. I, I love that simple bucket list of just not being stressed, enjoying the moment, traveling. Yeah. I mean, honestly, same. And I mean, that's a little bit of the story too, because, you know, Sam and Lou, Sam especially is kind of having a not great year. Mm -hmm. and it's like, how do we find those moments that make things feel good? You know, even yeah. in the bad years, the years that we want to skip past, you know, how do I right here in this little moment find a little bit of pleasure even if it's making a nice cup of tea for myself and I'm gonna sit down and I'm not gonna feel terrible like I think those are significant goals to have 
now, senior year, you know, whenever. So this next section is the rapid fire. So are you a plotter or a pantser? I am a plotter who is constantly trying to figure out how to plot again. <laughs> Every time. Uh, paperback or hardback? Paperback. Oh, I love yes. paperback. I, Same. Yeah. The fluffier, the better. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what's a book you want everyone to read? Somebody that I don't think gets enough, like I shouted, shouted about, especially in YA Contemporary is Christina Forrest. Um, mm -hmm. Now that I found you, I think it's just a brilliant YA Contemporary that I want to tell everybody about because I just think it's perfect. Should books be judged by their covers? Yes, they're gonna be like that's, I mean, if we're gonna, if we're gonna talk about covers and marketing and we're always, and I, I think covers are always in conversation together because, you know, all of a sudden everybody's books are illustrated or, you know, whatever it is. I think that's part of what's happening, you know, and that's part of the story's like existence on, in, on someone's shelf and in, in the store. What's your purpose in life? I love how that's a rapid fire question. <laughs> <you know? laughs> it sounds silly, but, you know, to tell stories, sometimes it feels like, For a lot of us, you know, we don't have these huge family histories that, or, you know, we're not able to access three, four, five generations back like a lot of, you know, other people can. So, you know, and I talked a little bit like of that and Rosa, like it sometimes it feels like this heirloom that you're, you can't touch because there's a lot of trauma and there's a, sometimes there's pain and there's all these things. So it feels significant that a book with my name on it is on someone's shelf and that even when I'm not here, somebody might find it on a shelf. And it's filled with stories of filled with my, you know, inspirations and people that I love and people that loved me were, in, you know, inspired pieces of it. So to have those little pieces of myself scattered around on other people's shelves when I loved books so much, I think, again, small things can be really, really significant. And to finish off, tell us about your upcoming projects. You have a middle grade. I actually have it here. Join the Club Maggie Diaz. I love it, love it, love it so much. It's actually um, highly illustrated. Courtney Lovett is the illustrator. Yeah, this was Scholastic and it's not something I expected to write. I wasn't expecting middle grade yet. You know, um, middle grade fell into my lap. I have an amazing editor at Scholastic, Shelly Romero, and we sort of wanted to write, you know, Latinx Lizzie McGuire. We we're like, let's have fun with this. And it's been one of the funnest projects I've ever worked on. You know, to be able to see my ideas come to life through Courtney's amazing art. I've never gotten to, you know, like think about stories like this, to see it so visually, everything's always in my head. So this has been one of the coolest things. So writing middle grade, especially this past year in a pandemic year, doing virtual school with my daughter and really wanting to leave the house and see my friends, like the seventh grader in me blossomed and came out and I remembered what it's like to just want to leave my house. So it's, yeah, middle grade. I'm having a lot of fun hanging out in Kidlet. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so exciting. Latinx Lizzie McGuire, AKA yeah. the blueprint. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's so, so fun. Uh, when does it come out? March, March 1st, 2022. Yeah. Mark that down people at home. Uh, I will leave links down below so that you can get our way back to always as well as Don't Date Rosa Santos. Thank you so much, Nina, for doing this with me. I have been wanting to chat with you for a while and I'm glad that we got to do it. I love it. Thank you so much for inviting me. This has been great. Everyone else, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below and we will see you in another one. Bye.